While looking through my video and written reflections and thinking back to the various experiences I had during this semester, such as the in-class exercises and my encounters with people with disabilities, I can tell that while I didn't necessarily have any breakthroughs in my ability to empathize or in the way I think of disability and related technology in the world today, I've certainly made refinements and improvements to those things, which have significance. One of the earliest assignments in this class was to watch a documentary called I Am Human, in which the main theme is how improvements in technology can make the lives of people with various disabilities easier through, at least partially, giving them their abilities back. I remember recognizing how this idea carried with it the implication that their disabilities are a problem to be solved and that it seemed to convey that they're unnatural or wrong in some way. Um, this is strictly in line with the medical model of disability, and I knew this thinking was flawed. Um, I was surprised that the film did not address the question of whether there are differing levels of ability that some people possess that are okay to accept and live with, instead of focusing so strongly on fixing them or eradicating those problems from the human population. Despite having this reaction to the documentary, it's, it was still clear to me that at the beginning of the semester, I had a limited view of disability and how it can affect individuals. Being made aware of the different models of disability and ways of thinking uh, through the grad student presentations helped me understand some of the bias that I had and that a lot of society has. Talking with Lisa during our first panel discussion certainly opened my eyes to the level of independence and, and richness of life even people with relatively significant levels of disability can have. Despite not being able to walk or feed herself, speak clearly, or use her hands easily for her entire life, she achieved many of the major accomplishments that unimpaired individuals work very hard for. She earned a college degree, went to grad school, owns her own home, she socializes, and, and has, a steady, uh, has had a steady full-time job for a long time. Through these experiences and by working with Ray Petro, my thoughts on disability have changed for the better. In my day-to-day -day life, I'm much more aware of the wide variety of impairments, um, not exclusively physical ones, that others find themselves with uh, and the specific ways in which their daily activities are affected by their impairments. Um, and so I, I feel I'm able to better work with and, and socialize um, with others more effectively. My group's home visits with Ray in particular helped me uh, further understand issues that people with impairments must deal with, especially regarding technology. Ray has a spinal cord injury resulting from a mountain bike accident six years ago, which has necessitated, necessitated the use of a power wheelchair and a number of other assistive technologies for him. He uses a tablet and a smartphone in combo uh, with some smart home devices to help him living in his house. Technology in general has worked itself into his private life and his work life in a number of ways. Um, listening to music and using high-end audio technology has become a passion of his since his ability to participate in his former hobby of mountain biking has been so limited. He's even started a small business called Blueprint Acoustic, selling custom modular speaker systems. And recently he's been um, asking my, for my group's input on a new cabinet speaker design that he is testing and working on getting a patent for, which he's very enthusiastic about. Uh, he even explained to us how he never would have found this passion if not for the change in the course of his life after his accident. Um, modern, innovative technology and talented CSU engineering students has, however, allowed him to continue his passion for biking to some extent through the modification of an off-road quad cycle that he is able to operate. Ray's embracement of technology that helps him live the life he wants to and the variety of devices our class saw in the occupational therapy lab have blown my mind, really. Uh, it's inspiring that so much work is being done on cutting edge devices like these to help people of different abilities live the way that they want to. It's reassuring as well um, to know what is available in, in the case that I myself become disabled at some point in my life. That has, that's been a recurring thought of mine throughout the semester, um, how I would cope with experiencing an accident like Ray's that results in me needing a wheelchair, losing my vision, or developing a, a neurological disorder. My very active lifestyle would be changed entirely. My hobbies and career aspirations would have to change, as would my, my social and my family life. And I know I'd struggle significantly with a reduction in independence. Uh, this is one way in which I've explored and developed my empathy skills over the last few months by practicing taking on the perspective 
of different people we've met who have impairments and considering the mental and emotional struggles that they're confronted with. Needless to say, this exercise of perspective taking has given me a new level of respect and admiration for people like Ray, Lisa, Laszlo, and even Bill, Ann, and Steven from I Am Human who've dealt with such adversity. Um, it's had the added benefit of making me more grateful for the abilities that I have right now, um, which has helped me appreciate the simpler aspects of my day-to-day -day life. A core desire of Bill's after his accident was to simply be able to feed himself. Beyond perspective taking, uh, my empathy and general ability to communicate with others have, has improved uh, throughout the semester as well. Sharing emotional stories, listening and responding to stories from my classmates, and paying close attention to unspoken forms of communication like facial expression, uh, body language and position, and eye contact are things uh, I would say I uh, didn't previously have, or I previously had limited experience with. Um, after this practice with uh, affective sharing and also um, mode switching, um, I've already noticed myself picking up, picking up on more subtle cues from people I've interacted with and at least in my opinion, um, I've been responding to them more effectively than with past interactions.